The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. My top five Ableton plugins. I'm talking about plugins that come with Ableton as stock audio plugins. I'm going to be going through the ones that I use the most and give you a little info about why I use them and how I use them. Starting with number one, without a doubt, the Ableton plugin that I use the most is the multiband dynamics. Within the multiband dynamics, I always use a preset that I made that starts from here, uh, but I always usually use it and end up using it more like this uh, way. And to get from here to here, you're just simply taking the OTT preset that comes with Ableton, removing all the low end, almost bumping the mid all the way up and bumping the high up just a little less than that. It makes it so loud that you got to turn it down 15 or so. But what this amount knob will be is a wet dry knob for how much compression you're trying to add. And I use it on leads closer to 100 and on vocals closer to zero. Um, it just depends on how sharp you're trying to make the sound that you put it on. But man, does this plugin sure make whatever you run through it sound sharp and cut through the mix, which is very helpful for sound design. Moving on to number two. The next plugin that I use the most is Ableton's compressor. Not too often do I use this as a compressor on sound in a traditional sense. I use this as my sidechain compressor because the convenience of being able to expand this, turn this on, go through all the channels in your song, pick the one that you'd like to use as an input, and then also perhaps EQ it before it gets to the actual compressor is so convenient. If I'm using a kick as my sidechain input, I always turn this on and do a low cut and cut out really everything but the attack of the kick drum. That way you can get a better uh, and quicker transient in your compressor and use your release knob to really dial in how much release you want or maybe how much release you don't want and leave it nice and low. And if I'm running a snare through here, I'll do the opposite where I bring the, bring the frequency knob down so that you're really just side chaining it to the low end of the snare. Uh, and again, I love plugins that have dry wet knobs. It's such a convenience to be able to pick between the processed and unprocessed signal and a lot of third parties really don't have this functionality. Do you produce music and love making fat Moombatan beats? Are you addicted to the dance hall rhythm? Do you find yourself using that same old reggaeton loop again and again? Then we've got the product for you. Get your coconuts ready for Hot Tropics, our brand new sample pack of Moombatan, Afro beat, and dance hall hits. Here at Whole Loops, we've handcrafted over 200 organic loops and recipe kits for your tropical bangers. Hot Tropics is available now at wholeloops.com. My third most used Ableton audio effect is really the audio effect rack. And not any one specific thing in here, but I use this to kind of store my catalog of leads that I may have been coming up with along the way in the songwriting process that may not have fit this project, but still would work in another project. And the ability to highlight all of your content and group them and save them as uh, an audio effect rack is such a time saver. My next most used Ableton plugin is the EQ8. Very simple user interface. I love how it shows you the waveform. Let's see if I drop a sample in here. I love how the EQ8 shows you the waveform. So you can see exactly where everything is resonating. You can see what it looks like after you perform the EQ. A lot of plugins don't have this form of metering in them. And 
this one not only has that but lets you expand it into even wider and just kind of hover your mouse over certain spark certain parts of the spectrum to see what frequencies are popping out in this sound moving on to my fifth most used pl plugin here within ableton is the good old ping pong delay this sounds great as a rhythmic delay like for quarter notes eighth notes, 16th notes. I find myself using this the most actually as a slap delay to thicken leads or vocals or sounds. I love flipping this from sync into time and just kind of manually dialing in a, a length of delay that I think sounds good at the tempo or for the type of vocal or lead sound that I'm putting this slap delay on but again with the dry wet knob I love any plugin that gives you this flexibility and if it's fast I'm all about it so that sums up my top five Ableton factory plugins as you can see the main reason to be using these plugins is for convenience and for speed and for most importantly the lack of latency because once you start adding plugins to your project that have latency it starts to make it more difficult to use your keyboard and to continue to build off of that idea or to maybe go back and um, you know try something again because you kind of lose the ability to put your hands on your keyboard and i think in the songwriting process that's something really important to maintain and these ableton plugins help you do exactly that so while further down the road i may swap them out for a third party plugin that does the same kind of thing but maybe sounds a little bit better these certainly have their time and place in the creative process and that's why i wanted to do a video on these because i think that that's very important so i'd like to thank you guys for watching if you'd like me to talk about some else please leave me a comment telling me why thank you for subscribing i will see you next week for tutorial tuesday